guests, I love you all. Listen, our next guests are reporters who are, I know, when sometimes people say reporters, you cringe, because I'm a reporter and I know so often it's associated with negative news. And I love it because these reporters are using their big voices and their platform to cover everything in this version of what they call the bright side. They look at trends and celebrities through this lens of optimism. That is the name of their podcast. And they have people talking, their listeners are reacting with comments like, this is my new favorite, so fun and positive, the P word, yes. And I was in a really negative mind space and the episode I played truly helped me. I love this concept because I'm like, listen, I love being a journalist, there are times that I can't even turn on the news myself. So it is refreshing to have a voice in the room be a positive one. Check out Simone Boyce and Danielle Robey in action. I'm Simone Boyce. I'm Danielle Robey, and this is The Bright Side from Hello Sunshine, a daily show where we come together to share women's stories, laugh, learn, and brighten your day. What do you feel like is your superpower now? I think my superpower and I don't know if it's just mine or I think it's within everybody, but I think it's being a reflection and a mirror for others to see themselves. We are here to talk all about happiness and how we can all cultivate it in our own lives. It's a practice, right? It's it's a daily practice that you do. It's, it's not a pursuit or a place that you're going because actually happiness is inside you. I feel very seen by you two and I'm just so appreciative for this conversation. Please welcome to the camp and the host of The Bright Side, Simone Boyce and Danielle Robey. Come on out, ladies. anyone who walks in the room with smiles is bright. You oh, burst oh through that God. door. Um, it's We're with the Tan fam. You are the, the Tan fam. Can, can we just have a moment from the Tan fam? Y'all are the best audience I'm TV. telling you. I, the best. Tell people if they gave an Emmy out for audience, I'd have a whole shelf of them behind me because yes, this is what's yes, up. Yes, this yes, is what's yes. up. Yes. But and I love that you're here because I know my audience will and does appreciate what you do. As I said, we for all you. three journalists here, mm -hmm. I hear people all the time. I don't even turn on the news camera anymore. I turn it on. I'm afraid. I'm this. I'm that. Yeah. And then you hear something like the bright side. Mm. I love that. Um, how was it retraining? your mind, because in news, you're trained to want to break, break news and it's usually negative news. Oh gosh, it's so true. And you know, as a reporter, I, I just remember carrying a lot of sorrow, like yeah. holding space for other people's sorrow. And it's, you know, it's one thing watching these tragedies from your couch, but yeah. then when you are in person connecting with these people who've lost everything, it impacts you. Yeah. But you know what it taught me? It taught me that joy is a superpower. It is. You know? And it is. When I think about the women in my life who have modeled that for me, it's the black women in my family. Yeah. It's like my mom who hosted these joyous gatherings when I was growing up and made everyone feel welcome. It's my aunt who still found a reason to smile while she was going through yeah. cancer. Yeah. You know, like there's always a reason to smile. I think yeah. that's so true. Um, we, we have that conversation a lot around here because I, Kiana Burns, my executive producer, she sent me a note one day and she said, I want Moses not to just know his mom was resilient. I want him to know she was happy. Yes. And that always stuck with me. And that's the journey. I know Reese Witherspoon yeah. uh, produces the show, which is, I mean, high company. Um, <laughs> Reese it has been dedicated to telling the stories of women through a strong lens. I think we even have a clip. Let's play one. Yeah. I started noticing that there were less and less opportunities for women to star in movies. And um, I just happened to start reading scripts that were just offensive. And they weren't, they weren't really showing the full spectrum of what women's lives were at the time. Okay, instead of sitting here and complaining about the problem, because mm -hmm. that wasn't acceptable, um, I decided to do something about the problem. Because women, you know, we're always part of the solution. I love that. And you are part of the solution here. Um, 
tell me how, how you select what you're going to talk about. I'm always curious in the selection process. I love that question. Simone and I are very different people. Yeah. Like we're <laughs> in different phases of life. I'm single, she's married, she has kids. I'm, did I say I'm single? I'm hunting for a man. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> it's national TV. You but know. you both um, have the same energy. I can feel it. I mean, yeah. Danielle, you, when you walked out, it's you both radiate a, a happiness. Mm. We do. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. And um, I think that we're trying to share a diverse uh, excuse me, a diverse perspective and breadth of stories mm -hmm. because when you share a single narrative, that's when stereotypes mm -hmm. happen, that's when bias occurs, that's when you flatten complex realities. Yeah. Um, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie talks about that. If there's any Beyonce fans, she uh, is <laughs> at the beginning eight, of the Flawless, whole is, you know? Yeah. And I just think that we're trying to make women feel proud to right. be women. Like when you listen to the pod, yeah. we're your girlfriends. Yeah. I love that because, you know, you talk about the range and diversity that you bring. You know, when Lish and I did, we talked about at the beginning of the show, the cookbook, we are the only cookbook with a black woman and a white woman on the cover. Wow. Okay. Well, crazy. Crazy. And I say crazy. that to say, yeah, that's a big thing because my seat at the table, I am an authentic Southern black woman to my core, mm -hmm. but my seats are everybody. Mm -hmm. If you want to sit down with me, you can sit down with me. Mm -hmm. And I love that you are different journeys of motherhood, of life, of race, but your common thread is you're just trying to bring something positive to the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. Well, and I hope that when you listen to our show, you can see yourself represented in yeah. our perspectives. You might listen yeah. to an episode and be like, okay, I'm a Danielle here, I'm a Simone there. Yeah. I haven't told you this, but I was with some of my best friends over the weekend. And oh. one of my best friend, Grace, she goes to me, Simone, you know I love you, you know you're my girl, but Danielle is my woo-woo queen. <laughs> I it love is because that. She's woo-woo, I'm the skeptic. I love, there you know go. what, that's, that's one of the reasons I fell in love with The View. I mean, all these years, like, everyone knows I'm obsessed with Whip Goldberg, but the original version of The View when Barbara Walters started it, it was like, one day this one was my favorite, and then the next day this person was my favorite, then I'm mad at this one because she didn't say what I wanted her to say. <laughs> right? And then yeah. that's the thing when you have different voices and you're not shrinking down. I tell mm. people, you take your mask off, I take my mask off, we yes. can keep it 100, mm -hmm. and that's the best conversation. Mm -hmm. That's the best conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Hello Sunshine is about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Reese is not just putting on a show when she's mm -hmm. saying that. Like, she and the whole team encourage us to be 100% yeah. honest. People can spot a phony. And yeah, TV, exactly. and I tell people with TV, and I've been doing this now almost 30 something plus years, at the beginning you'll think, oh, I really, and then suddenly you'll watch a show and you go, something about that, that, that. You could feel it. TV does not hide it. It well, creeps out, and podcast, which is the new form of this, I love, I listen and your ear will tell you that it is BS. Yeah. And you guys are authentic, and I love that. That's... Yeah. Thank you. It's true. Thank you. That's really important to us. And I think if we break down the name, The Bright Side, right, like yeah. inherent in that name is this contrast. You have to feel the weight of the dark clouds before you can appreciate the yes. sun-drenched part of life. And that's you know? a word I love. I got, got goosebumps. You it's know? true. It's true. And so when we have these conversations with wellness experts, with celebrities, with authors, like they are getting really real with us yeah. and telling us about the storms that they went through. They're sharing their learnings. We get curious. And hopefully we're working out our optimism I muscle together. It. Okay, well, coming up, guess what? The series on their podcast, they have something called Poppin' Off. We're going to pop <laughs> off after the break. I'm bracing myself. We'll be right back. Right back. Welcome back, everyone. I am back with the host of the Super Hot Podcast. Everyone is talking about It's called The Bright Side. Two big voices in the room, Simone Voice and Danielle Robey. And you have this segment called Pop Off. Popping mm -hmm. off, pop mm -hmm. off. Popping off. Popping off, popping off. I always think of that, the reality show with the girls, and they're like, pop off. I, <laughs> my brain goes there. So you tackle cultural stories, and you give your take. There was a recent article from The Cut about how much money women of each decade spend per year to maintain their appearance, our appearance. Let's play it. Pop off, pop it off. Um, what's interesting to know. note about this article, though, is that after the 30s, that average yearly price tag actually goes down, with women spending roughly 6000 in their 40s, then down to about 4000 in their 50s, okay. and then ending on around 2000 in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because after a while, I'm sure you're just like, this is how I look. <laughs> this, this is what's going on. <laughs> right? I hope, I, that's my theory, and I hope that's what it's like, because that's, that sounds very liberating. All right. 
Well, oh, our audience, they're not into it. We're live. Uh oh. This is a live show and it's literally popping off. No, it's all so popping our, off. Our Tam fam is like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. <laughs> I'm with the tampon. So you think it, you spend more as you get older? Don't you have more appointments? Like you have more things to do. I look at my mom, she has more appointments. She said, Danielle, get ready, it's right. coming. I don't I, know. What do you think? I want to spend less. You like, want to spend less? I want to care less about all this. Really? It's I, think, I think it's exhausting. <laughs> All right, because I, I I was thinking about this. I think the only thing I the only thing I spend less on, and I can't believe I'm gonna say this on TV, yeah. and I'm just gonna be honest. Say the it. only thing I spend less on is lingerie. I when oh, I was okay. in my 20s, I spent more when I was in my 20s, and now I'm like, yeah, I'm 54. You got it. You got it. You're gonna yeah. get it again. I don't know. I mean, yeah. when you look like this. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I I don't know. But the big story right now, people are talking about Ariana Grande, Vanity Fair. She went on a lie detector test uh, with Cynthia Revo. They're in Wicked, of course, and they asked her a question about plastic surgery. Let's play it. Did you get your nose done? No. Did you get a boob job? No. Did you get a face? Can you hair? imagine? No. Not yet. I'm open. <laughs> your face. First of all, I would never submit to a lie detector test on anything, <laughs> right. on anything. But why is that a pop-off moment? You know what? <laughs> um, That's a good question. I think people are just really fascinated with cosmetic surgery and like beauty standards and and what we get done. And so I do appreciate when celebrities are transparent about it. But at the same time, I'm also like, if you don't want to be transparent and you want to keep it mysterious, right. that's your prerogative yeah, too. Yeah. What I want. I want to hear from the men, because we know the men are out there getting the bro talks and the the looks maxing and all of that. I want to see. I want to. I want to hear from them. Bro, they call it bro talk. They call it bro Because we did a whole show. We did a whole show on Manscaped landscape, and we had men on our show who were having the height, the, the lengthening their legs thing. Mm. We had men on our show, and they were talking about what men do. To, we had a guy who. Uh, had his legs stretched uh, through wow. surgery to become taller. Um, the ha all the hair things, I always talk about women with hair, mm -hmm. the men and the, the units, I think they call them, that they're getting. Mm -hmm. So that is an interesting concept. I love that you had men on to talk about that, because yeah. when I was, the reason I think it's a pop-off is like, watch that clip and yeah. imagine somebody asking Michael B. Jordan or Denzel Washington that, like, we don't ask men that. Well, we do on our show. You have to watch the episode, because we did. <laughs> I was like, I want to know. I mean, there's a whole song about a guy in a BBL recently, so it's out there. I That's mean, it's good. like, uh, I like it's that. a very famous song. I, listen, I, I personally, my pop-off is, I don't think you should ask anybody that question. Mm. I just don't think you should ask people that, but. Right, don't ask women yeah, okay, or men. Okay, okay. Oh, well, they're like, we gotta go, we gotta all pop out. All right, Simone, <laughs> Danielle, thank you. You can catch the bright side wherever you listen to